I have some very good news for you guys. The egg is back. We've all tried it. You're sitting down for a nice, relaxing mining trip. You undock, you get to the belt, and you forgot your limpets. Presenting the Remember Your Limpets mark from the Down to Earth store. With this mark, you'll have a nice bright sign right in your face, reminding you to restart your limpets. Check out this and many other products at d2astore.com. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Down to Earth Astronomy. Some of you might remember the egg, that beautiful little rock that could make you hundreds and hundreds of millions of power. It's back, not to its full glory, but it's definitely back. And we're gonna go over everything you need to know regarding equipment you will bring and how to mine, where to go, what to do, everything. But for those of you who are not familiar with the egg, I will give you a very brief history lesson. The egg was a rock with four low temperature diamonds subsurface deposits on it. The trick was you could go, you could mine these, you would get low temperature diamonds at an extremely quick rate. And there were some mechanics in the game that allowed you to reset the rock so that it would respawn all the subsurface deposits that were later then patched out. However, it now seems that you can do it again. The only problem is if you go through the old egg today, you will see that it's now a four times bromelite rock instead of a four times low temperature diamonds. That's of course no good. But luckily, somebody has already found a new egg for us. This new egg has been named the Messiah for, well, the second coming, the new egg, or just egg 2.0. It is located in the same system as the old egg in Colt 285 sector CC-K space A38-2. As you can see here, it is a bit of a way outside the bubble, so fleet carriers are recommended if you want to go out here. It's also located in the same ring, actually in the same hotspot uh, around this uh, first planet. And when you get to the planet, you will see a triple overlap of low temperature diamond hotspots. What you're going to do is you're going to drop in to the center hotspot. And once you're in the center hotspot, it's going to be a little bit more convoluted than the old egg. It's a bit further away, but stick with me here. You're going to go to the center of the hotspot. So you have that pretty close to you. And then you're going to face the planet. Then you're going to target the local star, and you're going to make sure that the star is above you. The planet will orbit, so it might differ in what direction exactly it is. The only important thing is that it is above you. So keep that star above you, and you should be good to go. So with that, you're going to be flying upwards, and you're going to be leaving the mass lock zone. Once you're outside the mass lock zone, you're going to go to a navigation panel, and you're going to target the low temperature diamond hotspot that is 0.31 light seconds away from you. You're then going to begin rotating your ship in such a way that the hollow icon here on the compass, which means it's behind you, is lining up so that the little, um, the little like line that you can see here, the little left line here, is pointing in such a way that it hits just the inner edge of the uh, of the circle here. Um, I'll try to do an upscaled uh, drawing of it here so you can see. Uh, what I mean. So once you are located here outside the mass lock, you're facing in the right direction, you're going to nose up a little bit and start your frame shift drive because we actually have to FSD to the rock. It's 690 kilometers away from the center of the hotspot. While you're charging up Super Cruise, get your throttle to zero. This is very important. Throttle all the way back and then target the hotspot you are at. So target the local hotspot we are right next to. So now once you're in Super Cruise, you're going to be cruising just above the ring. Try not to drop into it too early, but try to stay close to the ring as you can and fly parallel to it without dropping in. And then we're going to keep a close eye on our distance. Once we're about 590, you can begin to nose down and, and crash into the ring. And hopefully you should be able to crash into the ring at around the 690 kilometers. You might miss it by 10, 30, I don't know, kilometers. With a little bit of training, you're going to be able to hit this relatively reliably. If you do either under or overshoot, just fly either directly away or directly towards uh, the hotspot where we started until you are at the 690 kilometers. Once you get there, you should see a bright, like elongated egg-shaped rock at the upper edge of the ring. It should be quite close to the top of the ring. So you don't have to dive in too far. If you prospect the rock, you will see that this is in fact a new egg. It has four low temperature diamonds subsurface deposit. Now if you're not familiar with subsurface mining, here's a list of the equipment you will need. You will need subsurface displacement missiles. You probably want to fit two or three dependent on how much cargo you're carrying. I carry 512 and I actually need three of them on board in order to not run out of ammo. You can just fit one and synthesize if you prefer that, but I think it's easy just to fit more 
and then just use them one at a time and swap my firing groups around. Then we're gonna need all the usual uh, mining equipment, refineries, cargo to hold our, our mined materials. We're gonna need collectors, of course. Number of collectors here, I've been running with nine so far. It's been working pretty well, but you can make do with less. You will, of course, need a prospector so you can actually find the rock. You will need decent shields, weapons, a fighter may be recommended, and of course also a um, detailed surface scanner so we can actually find the hotspots. But the reason why we're going to need the weapons and the good shields, the fighters, is going to be apparent here in a second. The ship I'm flying today is actually a blend between my gold digger build designed for Hashra's site where it has all the combat capabilities and my Lieutenant Diamond build which is designed for subsurface mining. I don't have a dedicated build for this type of mining yet so I just made a quick merge between those two builds in order to get something that kind of works for this. Both of these builds are on the commander's toolbox, so you can go, you can look at them there, and you can kind of see the video guides for those, and then you can make a blend between those two. I will try to get a dedicated build out for it later down the line, so do stay tuned to the channel for that. So now that we got all the equipment and we are ready to go subsurface mine, let's just give you a quick guide on how to do that. You're going to target one of the subsurface deposits, then you're going to fire your subsurface displacement missile, and you're going to be holding in the trigger. Once you hit the deposit, you will see this little animation in the lower left-hand corner. This is broken up into three main parts. First of all, you have the standard target uh, reticle that has a armor indicator, or basically a hull indicator. This is how much integrity that's left in that deposit. Every time you detonate a missile inside the deposit, it's gonna take damage, and once it loses all its integrity, you can't mine that deposit anymore. It could be anything from just having three missiles up to, I think, nine is some of the highest I've seen. The other two parts is further over here. You have the top parts which indicate the density as the rock as you're drilling down through the rock. The higher the density, the slower the drill is going to move. So when this graph is low, it's going to move fast. When the graph is high, it's going to move quick. The lower part of this UI is the deposit you're aiming for. So these uh, blue blocks is what you're aiming for. The more blocks that are in a group, the less fragments you're going to get. So you're aiming for the smaller groups. When you're starting out, if you're new to subsurface mining, I recommend you go for the three and the four groups, maybe three or two, depending on how good you are. But begin with, this, with the bigger groups until you get comfortable with it, and then move down. And as you begin to get good at it, you should avoid mining the fours and the threes altogether, and just go for the two and the ones, since they will give you the most fragments, and thereby also the biggest yield. So from here, it's just running around, mine those deposits, and collect all those juicy, juicy diamonds. Once you're done, you're gonna log out to main menu, and you're gonna log back in. This is where the weapons are important, because when you log back in, NPC pirates will spawn. But don't deal with them right away. What you're gonna do is you're gonna nose down into the ring, and you're gonna fire off your pulse wave analyzers to spot the rock again, and then get a prospector limpet on it right away. You don't wanna to begin to deal with the pirates before you have located the rock, because otherwise you might end up moving around, and then all of a sudden you lost it. If you lost it, it's back to square one, find the center of the hotspot, and do your super cruise again out to find it. So please, prospect it first, then deal with the pirates. Fitting point defense is also a good idea if they fire hatchbreakers so they don't get into uh, your cargo hold and steal your cargo. And a fighter, again, as I said, can also be a good idea to deal with it if you have it. Once you've dealt with the pirates, you will go back to the rock and you might notice that it says it's depleted. But despite the fact that the rock is depleted, the subsurface deposits have respawned and you can mine them again and again and again. You mine them, you log out, deal with the pirates, mine and rinse and repeat. Now, if we compare this to other types of mining, it's actually not that much more profitable than just go and run, for instance, a map or something like that. You make around 100 mil an hour when it comes to the straight mining time, if you're not including travel times for selling and that kind of stuff. So it's about the same as, as mining in the bubble. The only difference, of course, is this is way further out and you, and you will need a fleet carrier. So it's not like it's super overpowered, but I find subsurface mining to be one of the most enjoyable forms of mining, and this is why I'm really happy to see this working, because that means you can now make your money subsurface mining instead of straight up laser mining, which, to be honest, is a little bit more boring than, uh, than subsurface mining. And who knows, maybe someday somebody will find a comparable egg in the bubble, which will make this even more interesting. Now, if you found this video useful, I would really like if you would go down and subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot for watching. Remember to like the video as well. And until next time, I will see you guys in space.